Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCann and welcome to this Wayward Art Company tutorial on the Blender game engine. For those of you who have seen my videos, you know that I include game engine tips when I can, but then it occurred to me that if you have a particular interest in the game engine, you're probably not seeing those videos because they aren't advertised as such. And so I decided that I would just create the small series of game engine tutorials. I'm using these small mini games that I've created or that I'm still creating as part of a general art portfolio for myself. Um, this one I actually just built over the weekend. It's far from being finished. But basically the backstory behind it is I wanted to create uh, something that was sort of a, a mix between an, an adventure style game and survival horror. I like the elements of survival horror without, you know, having a lot of ammunition or, you know, resources. So uh, this character lives in London during the 1800s, and it's a zombie apocalypse, and he's also an inventor, and he, so he invents all of his weapons. And uh, this uh, gun that he has, actually, right now, it's completely useless. It's just sort of the frame of a pistol, and it has these three magnifying glasses mounted to it. And so the idea is that when he's standing in light, uh, it'll focus a beam, and then he can peel his enemies with it. Um, you know, so the, you know, back to the survival horror aspect, it's like, you know, usually you, you typically have to search for ammo. In this instance, you have to find light in order to use your weapon. So it's the basic concept. So you see now he's standing in light and he can, you know, focus this ray, which would kill his enemies, except right now it won't kill anything because I don't have it programmed to. <laughs> and, uh, and likewise, my, the enemies can't, can't affect my health either. Um, it's just I haven't really got there yet. But So this video is going to be about animating colors and transparency. And I'm going to show you a practical way to do this, or a practical example that this would be used for, and then uh, some different ideas of, of, of other, other ways you could use it. So I do have a health bar in the right-hand corner. And currently, again, the, the enemy can't affect it, but I do have it programmed to a keyboard sensor so that if I hit the space bar, it goes down. And as it goes down, it will animate in color until it's completely red, and then you die. And then the you died screen comes up, but it doesn't just blink into existence. It sort of fades in, which I kind of like. And that was animated with transparency. So... I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to go to that same scene that has my health bar and the you died screen. And I'm going to be creating a start screen so that when I hit play, the screen will say start, but it'll be flashing different colors and then it will fade using transparency. Make sure that your shading is in GLSL because every time you move to a different scene, uh, that defaults back to multi-textured. So I'm just scaling this plane up to my camera view. I'm going to add a new material and click Shadeless. And down underneath of Options, you need to check Object Color. Without that, you won't be able to see the colors after you've animated them. Now I'm going to click Transparency and move the alpha all the way down because I'm going to create an alpha image. So to do this, I'm going to go into GIMP and create a new image. And under Advanced Options, I'm going to choose Transparent Background. And with the Text tool, I'm just going to type Start. Now I'm going to change the size. And select a nice font, something kind of bold. I think this one will work. Now I'm going to center it. Now I want to duplicate this layer and use the select tool and then invert that selection. And then I'm going to paint that second layer completely white. Now if I use the grab tool, can just offset it so that it looks like that text has a drop shadow. Now 
Now I'm just going to export that as a PNG to my desktop. And so I can open that image and make sure under influence for the diffuse section you check alpha. Now I'm just going to fix the UVs. Okay, and so I have the basics of my start screen. I'm going to name this because I've done a terrible job at, at labeling the, uh, the objects in my scene so far. So now I'm going to go to my object window and under object color I'm going to add keyframes just by hovering over the color and hitting I. And now you see that it left that little yellow line at frame 1. I'm going to jump up every 20 frames and then change the color. So I'll make it a green, I'll hover over that color and hit I, add another keyframe, move up 20 more frames. This time I'll choose red. Uh, you can see the, the, the you're dead and the um, health bar in the background, but that'll be okay because we'll use logic bricks to, to make sure that everything stays separate. Okay, now also at frame 80, I'm going to take the transparency all the way down and make sure that I hit I again to lock in that, that keyframe. And now it changes colors and then fades out. So with that plane selected, our start screen, um, I suppose you could just do always because it's only going to play once and then disappear. So I'm going to choose an always sensor and then an action actuator. And the action that I'm going to select is start screen action. Uh, and now I need to set the keyframes or set the uh, animation frames 1 to 80. And play is fine again because it's only going to play once. So now I'll connect those, and I think we're good. I think that that's going to work. So now I'll go back to my first scene, and if I hit play, then yeah, I've got this flashy start screen that disappears. So some other examples of what you could do with this are, you know, maybe collectible objects like this key by animating the color, by making it flash, it's, it becomes apparent that there's objects in your scene that need to be collected. So if you're just stumbling along and you find this flashing key, you'd probably know that you needed, you needed it. It's, it stands out from all of the other static objects. Also, you can animate characters to indicate their emotions or also to you know show maybe that they've taken damage so that's the end of it I guess I uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope that you learned something and you know if the series does well if people seem interested then I'll you know keep making them so please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time thanks for watching